Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here with Switch Adapted Toys, and today I'm really excited to show you how to build our new version two 3D printed switch button. Uh, what's great about this button is it's got interchangeable tops, so you can easily unscrew the top, switch it out for a different color, uh, and there's some kind of improvements in how you assemble it, just kind of ease of use kind of things. Uh, it's still got great easy activation um, that our first switch have. We're really excited for it. Uh, if you like this video, or if you find it helpful, make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe because we're posting new videos all about Switch Adapting Toys all the time. Switch Adapted Toys is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and our mission is to make play possible for kids of all abilities. Uh, we do that by creating free resources, how-to videos, showing people how to adapt toys off the shelf and make them switch button compatible. Uh, all our resources are completely free and we can only do this with your support. So if you're able or willing to donate to Switch Adapted Toys, uh, it would mean the world to us. Uh, you can do so on our website, www.switchtoys.org, and I'll put a link in the description below. So without further ado, let's just uh, jump right into it. Alrighty, so the first thing that we want to do is get the files off of our website. And you can go to www.switchtoys.org and there you'll find all of our files. Uh, you do have to have an account, but it is 100% free. Uh, so you can go ahead and log in or, or create an account. And then once you're logged in, you can go to Resource Hub, File Library, 3D Printed Switch Button, and we're looking for our version two. So our version two is our latest version. Uh, it has got interchangeable tops. Uh, it's really easy to assemble. Uh, we've made some improvements from our version one. Uh, we still have our version one available. If your printer struggles to print threads and, uh, and struggles to print our version two. So uh, you've got an option here. I'm gonna show you how to assemble and build the, the version two. All right, so we've got our base and we've got our top. We separated the two because you might want to print different colors for your tops. So you'll need to download both of these files. So once you have the files downloaded, you can unzip the file and load them into your slicing software. Uh, we're gonna do them individually, so you'll have two separate prints, one for the base and one for the top. Uh, and your slicing software basically just takes the model and breaks it down into a, a path that the extruder will go to actually create your part. Um, so there are some settings that we want to dial in and your slicing software might look different than ours. We have a Bamboo Labs printer, so we're using Bamboo Studios. Uh, I really like Bamboo printers. Uh, they're really easy. We're not sponsored by them, but um, that's what we have. It's They're great printers. If you're looking for a 3D printer, uh, they make some really good, inexpensive print printers. Uh, you can certainly find cheaper out there, but um, the ease and convenience of Bamboo Labs is, is great. So uh, that's what we're gonna show you here. Your slicing software might look different if you've got a different 3D printer. All right, so you can see we've got our our model here loaded into uh, the slicing software. This is the base. Um, there are a couple settings that we're going to adjust. Uh, we like to run our layer height at 16 millimeters. Uh, our printer can print that really nice and neatly. Um, if, if you struggle with that, you could always adjust this a little bit, just kind of depending on your printer, but we find 16 millimeters is fine. Um, we're printing with the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on it, um, and that's, that's totally fine. Uh, your seam position, you could uh, run it on a line, and if you want to kind of hide the seam position a little bit better, uh, you could do a scarf joint seam. Uh, you're some 3D printer slicing softwares might not have this, uh, and it's kind of, you gotta go in the advanced setting. But if you do this, it kind of helps hide the seam a little bit better, but it's totally optional, so don't feel like you need to have that. Uh, the strength, we like an infill density of 15%. You, you don't really need anything more than that. Um, the supports, we, we don't really need support for this. Um, as long as your printer can handle some little minor uh, overhangs, um, it should be totally fine. Uh, our printer has no problem with those, so we run it without supports, but you could also do it with supports if your printer is struggling to, to do that. And that's pretty much it for the base. Uh, so we're gonna just go ahead and slice this. 
And you can see it'll take about an hour to print this uh, this base with our printer. It might take your printer a bit longer. Ours is, is pretty darn quick. Um, but you can see now that we've got it sliced, we can kind of look at how like each layer height individually, which is kind of cool. Um, and you can see maybe you can kind of assess if your printer you think you're gonna have issues with a couple little small overhangs like this hole or there's a couple little spots in the the, uh, the switch uh, housing there. Um, but yeah, this should be good to go. I'm gonna hit print and it's gonna send it to my printer and in about an hour I will have this part made and ready. All right, so now that I've got the base printed, I'm going to go ahead and slice the top. So I've loaded in the top into my program and there are definitely some settings here that we want to adjust. Uh, we're gonna leave our layer height at 16 millimeters where it was before. And again, now we're gonna do the seam position in the back and um, a, a scarf joint seam um, that kind of help hide that seam a little bit. Again, not necessary if your printer doesn't have that or your slicing software doesn't have it. Uh, our strength, we're still at 15% infill density, uh, but we definitely want to run supports on this one. Our Bamboo Studio slicing software it has, does tree supports, uh, and those are great because otherwise, if you just have to do normal supports, it can be kind of hard to get it out of this piece, and I'll kind of show you why here in a second. So if you have tree supports, we like using those. Uh, and I do it on the build plate only. So you could, in theory, print this upside down. Uh, what that would do is eliminate the needs for a bunch of supports. The problem is that this the button has a contoured edge here, and when you're printing this contour edge, it, there's nothing really supporting this outer edge. So it just it can be done. It just kind of looks a little jagged, and it's not very smooth. Uh, and with those tree supports, it really doesn't create that much support. So just printing it uh, normally like this is, is the way to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit slice. And you can see it'll take a little bit over an hour for our printer. Your printer might take a little bit longer, just kind of depends. And you can see how these tree supports work. So if I scroll down here, you can see that those, those little trees, these little green parts, are gonna basically be supporting what is the top of the print. Uh, if you don't have those, there's just nothing there. To, to, you're basically just printing through air and it's just not gonna work. So either print it upside down or print it with some supports. And what's great about these trees is that these are really easy to get in here and remove with a little some, some snips. Um, if, if you do kind of normal support, I'll show you what that looks like. If you use normal supports, the supports basically fill up that entire cavity and it can make it a lot harder to get out. It can still be done. Uh, it's just much more difficult to clear out as opposed to those tree supports. All right, so with those tree supports in there, I'm gonna just go ahead and hit print and it's gonna send it to my printer. And then in about an hour, um, it's gonna be done. Uh, we print with PLA. Uh, you could print with another different material if you wanted to, but PLA is just fine. It's cheap, it's biodegradable, uh, it's the way to go. All right, so my print is done and I'm just going to kind of release it from the build plate. And here we can see all those tree supports. Now you can pretty easily just kind of break these off, uh, but you can also get some little snips and just kind of snip the bases off and just kind of work your way around until you've got it all cleared out. All right, so once you get all those supports out, uh, your ring here might still kind of be attached to uh, the top. So if that's the case, you just kind of push down on the edges and it will release. Uh, and now this is ready to go ahead and be put on our base. 
So we're gonna need a couple other things to assemble this switch. Uh, you're gonna need a mechanical switch button. Uh, we use a Cherry MX Silver. Uh, this is, uh, we use it because it, it requires very little force to activate. Uh, so it is great for, uh, you know, off-center presses and stuff like that. I really recommend you find these. You can get like a 10 pack for like $5, uh, pretty cheap. And then what you're gonna need is a headphone jack cable. This is 3.5 millimeters. This is a mono uh, cable, so it's just got a tip and a sleeve. More readily available are like a stereo headphone jack cable that have a tip ring and sleeve. Uh, they'll have three wires inside and it's gonna be very similar to what we do to adapt toys when you've got a stereo headphone jack. Um, you will need to combine two of those wires together uh, you basically want to keep the tip wire separate and the ring and the sleeve wire you're gonna combine those so it's gonna take maybe a little bit of playing around with just to make sure that you've got the right connections so as long as you got the tip and the ring and the sleeve together you should be totally fine but this is a mono cable so we're only gonna have two wires in here so it is pretty darn straightforward and we buy a six foot long cable and I'm just gonna cut it in half that way I get two out of it uh, if you wanted a longer cable, cut it at six feet. That's not a problem. You're just gonna cut off, you just would cut off the male end and have a six foot long cable. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fish our cable through the hole in our base. And you can use some tweezers or something just to kind of help you fish that through. And now we're gonna remove the outside casing on the headphone jack. All right, so on this wire, I've got a bunch of these bare wires and this one wire that is wrapped in this uh, cover. So I'm just gonna kind of combine all of my bare wires together and I'm gonna twist them to form one wire. And then I'm gonna remove just a little bit of the tip of the other wire, just to expose a little bit of that, maybe a little bit more. just like that. So I've got a bunch of exposed wire here that I want to kind of cover and protect. So I'm just going to basically put a heat shrink wire cover over this wire and heat it up so it shrinks down. Uh, so I basically put a casing on this wire. All right, so I've got a little bit of heat shrink wire cover here. I'm just going to basically slip it over that wire and I'll use a heat gun to shrink that down. All right, so now we're gonna solder our wires to our mechanical switch. So I've got this super high-tech block of wood here and a, and a clothespin just to kind of hold things in place for me. And I'm just going to basically take my wire and essentially hook it around these two prongs that are on the back of the um, mechanical switch. I'm just gonna kind of loop it around Kind of get it as tight as I can. All right, so I've got my soldering iron heated up and I'm just gonna basically heat up my solder and get it to melt all on that wire, making sure I make good contact with that post on the mechanical switch button. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for this other side. And I'm gonna go ahead and solder that. All right, just like that, we're connected. All right, so before we uh, go any further, it's a good idea to test and just make sure that uh, you've got everything wired properly. So I'm gonna plug in a toy and I'm just gonna press my button and see if it works. There we go. All right, so now that I know that everything works, I'm going to take out some of the slack. And you can see printed inside this base, there's this little capture slot. This is what's gonna kind of hold your wire in place so that if someone were to yank it, uh, it doesn't just pull the whole thing out. So what we're gonna do is have a little slack to go kind of around this this box and uh, just like this. I'm gonna just kind of wrap it around and then this just fits right into that housing. Just kind of press it down and it will click into place. And then I'm gonna pull out some extra slack and just make sure that my wire gets pressed into this capture slot. I can even use something like screwdriver or something just to make sure I get it nice and down there good. All right, and now what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of CA glue or super glue down into this slot just to make sure that I lock everything in place. All right, just 
just like that. And then I'll use a little bit of activator, making sure I try not to get too much on that button. But that activator just basically instantly dries that super glue. It's not necessary, but it is handy. All right, so now we can go ahead and screw on our top. Uh, what's great about this, it's really easy to switch out the colors if you ever want to change the color of the top. All right, that's basically it. Let's plug in our toy one more time and just make sure that everything still works. There we go. So I really hope that you enjoyed our new version of our Switch. Uh, we think it's a, a big improvement from our first version. Uh, being able to switch out those tops is, is super helpful. Um, and uh, you can even print a glow in the dark one if you'd like or anything like that or customize it, put a name on the top or however you want to customize your Switch. You can do that now without having to build a whole new Switch, which is great. If you like this video or if you found it helpful, make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe because we're posting new videos all the time all about Switch Adapting Toys. Switch Adapting Toys is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and our whole goal is to make play possible for kids of all abilities. So uh, we teach people how to Switch Adapt Toys, we show them how to make 3D printed Switch buttons. Uh, and you can find all of our resources on our website at www.switchtoys.org. And if you're able or willing to donate to our nonprofit or our cause here, it really does help us out in a huge way. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below where you can do that. And like I said, it really does help us out in a big way, reach more people and give these resources out for completely for free to anyone who needs them. Lastly, if you've got a group or an organization and you want to adapt toys kind of on a bigger scale for kids in your community, uh, you could form what we call a Switch Chapter, and we kind of help you guide you through that process so that you can serve your community in that way. And you can find out more information about our Switch Chapters on our website. Again, www.switchtoys.org. So that's it. My name's Eric with Switch Adapted Toys, and we'll see you next time. Switched Adapted Toys. Making play possible.